this video we're going to explore the use of true-false questions in the Moodle quiz module. You'll need to have a quiz going, so you'll have to be in the module where the quiz is located, and of course you have to make sure that editing is on. Here I have a quiz that's already started, the ice cream quiz. When you click on the quiz as a teacher, if there are no questions currently in the quiz, you'll get this screen that asks you to edit the quiz and re remind you that there are no questions that have been added. If, however, a question has already been added, it will prompt you to take the quiz itself. What you'll need to do then is go over to the sidebar and click the Edit Quiz button. That will always get you to the question editing screen. Once you're in the question editing screen, to add a question, just simply click the first available Add a Question button. I'm going to show you how to add a true-false question. So we'll highlight true-false and then click Next. The category that you put your question is in is important. If you want this question to be available to use again on other quizzes or maybe on a test that you create at the end of the unit, you should leave it in the default category for your class. If you want it to be sorted, to be organized, only to that quiz, then you should select default for, in this case, the ice cream quiz. You have to give the question a name. Typically this could be just a number, that's usually what I use. And then the text of the question. This is the statement that you want the students to evaluate if it's true or false. So I'm going to put a statement here about ice cream. The statement is going to be, almost sinful is a flavor of ice cream at West Dairy. Those of you who are from Hayward are probably familiar with the correct answer. The default is always false. If you go down to correct answer, that's the next thing you have to change. The default is always false. In this case, it's not correct. True is the right answer, so you have to modify that. Now, once you've done that, you can give feedback for true or false if you'd like to. So if you want the students who have selected it true to see this response, good job, or whatever you'd like, you can put that in the true. And then false, uh, you could put something like, sorry, that is not correct. That's not mandatory. You don't have to put feedback on there, but it's available to you. And that's for a true-false question all you really have to do. Then click Save Changes. And then the question pops up and you see a little bit of the text of the question and two buttons that are important. One is this little magnifying glass. This is the preview button. So if you want to see what the question is going to look like to the student, you get this little preview. You can see that they are reading the text that you put in there. And then if you click the Fill in Correct Responses button, you can just make sure that you set it up right so that the correct response is given, which is true. Then you can close the preview. If you were wrong, if the question was written incorrectly or you see a problem with how the question is appearing to the students, then the other button that you want is the update button, the little hand with the pencil. Click on that and it takes you right back to that editing page where you originally created the question and then you can and then you can edit from there. Now in the question text you don't have to put only text. You can put other things. If you're a math or science teacher, you might be interested to know that there's a whole variety of symbols that you can choose from, including some arrows, um, fractions, mathematical symbols of other kinds, and foreign language teachers might also be interested in knowing that there are some uh, non-American English characters available too. Another option is you can install a table. You can specify how many columns and rows and just put in the data that you need. Uh, for a table of information. Again, that might be most useful for math and science teachers, but social studies could also use that and maybe some other categories as well. You can put in Moodle Media, which allows you to put video clips in there. I have not made much use of that, but I don't think it's very difficult to do. You can also insert an image. So if I click this little tree here, that's the Insert Image box, and then you can upload an image you can find one on Moodle, but if you haven't uploaded anything to Moodle yet, you probably want to click the Upload a File and go and Browse. So I've selected a 
picture that I loaded just for this. And then once you have your picture, I can tell that this is going to be much bigger than I want. It's a picture of an ice cream cone. And I click on the Appearance tab, and it allows me to change the size. The dimensions are huge here, 1540. I want them to probably only be about 250 wide. And it'll save your aspect ratio, and you click Insert. Then it'll give you this little dialog box. And this is mostly about if you have students who have a visual disability, just verifying that you want to put an image without a description in it. Most of the time that's going to be okay, but if you have a student or want to prepare for having a student that would have a difficulty with a picture with no description that you want to probably add a caption. I'm going to click OK, and now I've got this image also in my text. I click Save Changes, and now when I preview that question, I see that the student sees not only the text, almost simple as a flavor of ice cream at West Dairy, but also sees the picture of the ice cream cone. So that shows you how you can add a true-false question to a quiz in Moodle Quiz Module.